Phil, can you uh, can you still hear us? I can hear you. Yay! Hey, there we go. Your voice is coming from the ceiling. Oh, you guys are super duper pixelated. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. We're eight bit today. How are you? How pixelated? Are you like 16? He's not actually up 32 there. 32 bit? Just so you know. Microphone's up there. I don't really understand, but not sending video, sending video. Oh, wait. We've got a little spinny wheel thing. Hey! 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 Video! There we go. <laughs> um, are you hearing an echo? Uh, we no, are no. not. Okay. Otherwise, I will stick my ear pieces in. I don't look like some kind of old man. Huh? <laughs> okay. All right. Here I am on TV, except I'm on my computer. And on ours. And on everybody else. Oh, jumpy. Get in it. Are we coming through okay? Yeah. You guys sound great. I look terrible on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> all blurry. That's all right. We're, We're close enough. Platter. <laughs> there you go. Is that working? That the desired effect was achieved. I think yes. Okay. All right. Let me. Uh, you know what? Let me kill a couple of windows here. Maybe that'll help. I I that's all I can do. It. Don't even Hello. think about it. Where's damn it, Liz? Uh, Liz Hi, is uh, right Liz. here. Right in the back. Hi. Wow, four pixels just waved at me. <laughs> <laughs> is that better? You see? You see that? Okay. <laughs> and now it was eight pixels. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All righty. Uh, well, welcome to Desert Bus. Thank you. How's, uh, how's life in your neck of the woods? Hello, deserters. Um, <laughs> everything here is great. It's been a really unbelievably busy day, and I'm glad that uh, I made it here in one piece, actually. Oh, so are we. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I can see there are a lot of you in there. Uh, yeah, well, there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of us here. You know, I was, gonna, I was in the chat room a couple of times, and I thought I'd ask a couple of questions, and I realized that there was no chance with like 80 bazillion people in there. But uh, I, I, I've watched for a few hours. I've had it run in the background and all that, but I, I haven't heard you talk about this. What's with all the clothes? Oh, what's with all the clothes? Uh, we're yeah, at, uh, yeah, uh, we're on the, the side. Maybe this way. I don't know which way my camera's working. Uh, yeah, we're uh, when we're not doing this, we're a um, we're a sketch comedy group, and we do uh, oh. we do streaming video online. You've actually linked one of our videos previously. Um, that was a complete mistake. I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> it was a uh, Regina Specter video. So, um, okay. But uh, yeah, so these, this is our proper. This is where we film. So this is like our okay. studio and and everything. And uh, it is this literally is our the green room. rack. Yeah, yeah that's exactly yeah. right. Green screen. We have a chroma green wall for keying in the background and all that. I saw the Mario uh, uh, bit that you did. I guess it was yesterday. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the dancing Mario pillows. That was insane. Yeah. That was exciting. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I think the dancing is what made that go into the extra digit. That was like three grand. Is that how much you guys made? Uh, almost 30, four, I think. Yeah. 34, 36, 36 something. Yeah. Oh, wow. my God. Yeah. yeah, we can round up. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I think you're, at this point, relatively well-versed in what we do, but would you like to uh, introduce, introduce yourself to the chat and make sure that everybody who's out there watching knows what you do? I got nothing. <laughs> you know, you're super awesome. I'm, I'm wearing pajamas. I'm in my house. Uh, I don't have a big fancy... You know, look at this. This is my microphone. I saw what Veronica Belmont <laughs> She had like $17,000 worth of just microphones. And I've got this Logitech POS that, you know, oh, whatever. <laughs> hey, it's okay. I'm not jealous. Um, I actually like her. She's cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm Phil Plate. I'm an astronomer and a blogger and uh, a failed TV host, and uh, gosh, what else? I've written a couple of books about astronomy, and um, that's really it. That's, that's all I got. Wow, y'all are really quiet. <laughs> we're wrapped. Well, we're, well, yes, we're wrapped. We're, uh... yeah, I think you've been up for like four days straight. I think yeah. that's probably too like an explanation. <laughs> Alrighty, well, no, so I, I write the, uh, the Bad Astronomy blog for Discover Magazine. And I'm a huge and, fan. Uh, try to keep up to date with what's going on in, in space and all that stuff. A lot of fun. Yes. Alrighty, well, uh, let's jump right into <laughs> questions. Um, oh, we, yeah, the questions. I saw some of those. Yeah, we have, we have a few requisite questions that we have to get out of the way. We've been just sort of asking everybody. Um, see. <laughs> thumbs up, Alex. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, a set-up prank just went through. I hate you um, guys. So, first requisite question. What is your stance on erotic Star Trek fan fiction? Oh. oh. 
Uh, as long as it's uh, K slash S, I'm okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, second. <laughs> 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 Nothing. Okay. To think about that one, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Around here, it that's just, not it a just joke. depends on, on who's on which side, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a replicator involved. The, uh, the, the, oh. <laughs> quick, quick, next question. <laughs> next question. Uh, okay, uh, the, uh, the other thing we're going to ask you uh, is towards the end of the call, we'd like you to have a fact prepared. Um, any, you, you, anything you like, some true fact, piece of trivial knowledge that you'd like to share with the world. Um, you don't have to come up with it now. 17,843 of them. Oh, I'm glad you counted. Yeah. It might take a while. Coming. All right, so uh, select one as we go, and you can share it with us towards the end. Um, okay. okay. All right, so moving on to real questions now. Okay. <laughs> um, being a scientist yourself, do you ever find it difficult to watch sci-fi TV shows or movies while keeping a straight face? No. No? Uh, do you want elaboration? A little well? elaboration would um, be great. Um... <sighs> It's not, well, you go through phases. Uh, when I was a kid and everything, I just would eat everything up, and I completely uncritically. Uh, my, one of my favorite movies is still with Them, which is the <laughs> movie from the 1950s nice. or something. Um, and I like a lot of those, those really crappy sci-fi movies. I really do. Um, once I started, I started writing them up. When I, when I first started my, my website, uh, Bad Astronomy, I started doing movie reviews, and it was a lot of fun. But I was um, uh, an ass, actually, you know, this movie sucked. And then I kind of learned how to do that better and say, you know, I like this movie. It has a lot of good things going for it. Yeah, but that scene where the petunia mated with the Bigfoot may have not been in complete scientific accuracy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you try to do it that way uh, to, to obey you know, Will's, Will's law there. Yeah. Oh, this for you, but it's kind of like... The chat could learn something from that shirt. <laughs> what? People are being inconsiderate in an internet chat room? Who'd have thought, know. right? Welcome to the web, my friend. <laughs> um, um, but in fact, uh, and you'll, you'll note that I can't answer any question in under about 36 minutes. Um, but, but actually, nowadays, it's, it's not that big of a deal. I, it, it depends on the movie. If I'm going to review it, and I take notes and everything, and, and but typically I'll just sit back and enjoy it. I don't have a problem sacrificing science for a story if the story needs to sacrifice the science. So, you know, enjoy the movie. It's okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, team Edison or Team Tesla? Well, yeah, I saw that question. I don't know how to answer that. I've seen the Tesla cars driving around Boulder, and they're awesome. Um, and I've seen um, a Tesla coil. I was up close to a huge Tesla coil last year, and it was really cool. Um, and of course, the U.S. government is using Tesla coils to zap down uh, UFOs. I've read this on, on the web, and uh, so I, you know, I could go with Tesla. Yeah. All right. I think that's two Team Teslas so far, isn't Woo! it? Yep. Come Sounds to think of it, Edison was my rival high school, so yeah, I'll go with Tesla. All right. Take that, Edison. No reason as any. Okay, so here's a question for you that's sort of related to a current sort of debated finding um, that I've seen you talking about a fair bit. Do you think that we will see the breaking of the speed of light by the end of this generation? No. No. Or any generation. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Bus cameras down? I don't know. Bus I don't feel the need to defend that. It's got all of science behind me, so. Perfect. Um, <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> no, I, I don't mean to be so smart. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I was, I've been writing about these uh, faster-than-light neutrinos, uh, this, this whole foo fra that's coming out of Europe. And most people are, you know, fairly sure this is some sort of error that these guys made in the timing of the experiment, where they, they made neutrinos over here, and then they measured how long it took them to get over here, and they got there faster than the speed of light. Uh, chances are... Uh, they just timed this thing poorly. They're, they're using a timing apparatus that has never been done in an experiment like this. They're actually using GPS. And so everybody's fairly convinced that, that the timing is off. But it's getting a lot of interesting comments when I write about it. And uh, one person was saying, hey, look, you know, Chuck, Chuck Yeager said, you know, what sound barrier? And it's like, yeah, but you see, the sound barrier is not a physical barrier. It's just the speed of sound. It's an engineering problem, not a physical one. You have to build something that withstand that kind of pressure. Going faster than light uh, is a violation of almost every physical law that we know. It would be awesome if, if we found out that things could move faster than light. 
But right now, you know, that that's such a fundamental limit in physics, it would have to be outstanding evidence for it to be believed at all. So I just, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Well, crap. And you're all set. <laughs> now let me tell you about the equations here. <laughs> um, let me see here. We, um, we do have au an auction thing. We do too. have an auction to do, so we, so. we can get to that. Uh-oh. Doesn't involve singing, does it? No, no, no it I, doesn't I, have to. Wait. I mean, it can if you want it to. Feelings. Whoa. <laughs> um, have you had any recent <coughs> encounters with the types of sci uh, pseudoscience you used to deal with very often and still do? Uh, what? <laughs> like, uh, sorry. Uh, have you had any That's recent? Unusually parsed sentence. Uh, it was. Sorry. Uh, have you had any recent encounters with the various sort of types of pseudoscience that you tend to uh, debunk on your blog? Anything oh, recent yeah. that springs to mind? You mean like like face to face or or just because that does happen? Yeah. Uh, sure. Face to face. <laughs> <laughs> the the question's not more specific. I'm just sort of yeah. Okay. As it goes. Yeah, and, and you're probably getting a lot of donations during that whole dead air thing when we're just looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Face to face is rare because I hardly ever leave my house, um, <laughs> but it does happen. And last year at the amazing meeting at James Randi's Skeptic Conference, which is every year in, in July in, in Las Vegas, there was a dyed in the wool moon hoax believer, a guy who thinks the Apollo missions were fake. Oh my God. And he makes these, these YouTube videos, which are inaccurate, <laughs> which would be a euphemism. Nice. Uh, and and he kind of confronted me and wouldn't leave me alone. Even I, even after I was telling him, look, you know, I, I'm I'm here talking with friends. Please go bug somebody else. He kept pestering me and showing me things like, did you know the president was ready to have a speech saying that you know the astronauts had died in space? And I thought, yes. And how does that show that it was a fake? And did you know this and that? And it's like it, it's all this stuff that kind of has to do with Apollo, but not really, and doesn't really have any any evidentiary basis toward it being a fake it was just weird stuff and it's like you know dude come on you know show me show me how they faked it or show me that they couldn't do it but they can't do that because they didn't fake it and they did do it uh, and, and in fact uh, this guy Adam Savage from Mythbusters oh, I've heard of him. Uh, gave a talk was that I said I've heard of him yeah um, uh, really good-looking guy you know bald red hair beard um, glasses um, he, he, he gave a, a talk at, at this meeting and then the Moonhawks guy started asking him questions and Adam just basically slammed him I think I want to think that that's online someplace but he basically says listen he says you can say what you want but I'm coming from the direction of I know that I'm right and I know that you're wrong it was actually pretty awesome <laughs> it is cool. so there you go I'm trying to think of anything else I can't really think of anything else I said Oh. Is this something you'd like to share with the rest of the class? <laughs> I, I, I was saying I hate those people, but then I thought maybe I shouldn't say that, so... No, I hate them too. Yeah! yeah. yeah. They, no, don't... they all kick puppies. I've seen <laughs> them. I'll tell you, you know who hates them the most? Buzz Aldrin. Oh. You, you've seen that video, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Have I have I seen that video? Yes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was in September of 2003 when when Buzz Aldrin was giving a talk and Bart Sabrell uh, popped out of the bushes almost literally with a <laughs> and uh, started harassing Buzz Aldrin. Now Bart, Bart Sabrell has made a bunch of um, incredibly wrong videos. But he, he, about the moon landings, about saying how Apollo was fake. But he had his heyday a few years ago. People were kind of believing what he was saying because that, that terrible, terrible Fox TV show called Conspiracy Theory. Did we land on the moon? Yep. You know, and the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's very short. <laughs> they, they talked to him about some of that stuff, and, and he, 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 made, he was making videos. He had a website. And the stuff he said is just so utterly easy to debunk. It's just crap. And uh, he, he, was, he was basically more of a showman than anything else. And so he literally cornered Buzz Aldrin. And, you know, Bart Sabrell is well over six feet tall. Buzz Aldrin is like 5'11", 160 pounds, something like that. Bart's very large. And, and was looming over Buzz Aldrin. Now, this, I love this part because he says, you know, will you swear on a Bible 
that you stepped foot on the moon and Buzz is like, get out of my face. And Bart said, you won't swear in this Bible because you're a liar and a coward and a thief. And then I think he went, oof, because that's when Buzz blocked him. <laughs> yes! Yeah! Yeah! Even if Buzz didn't walk on the moon, which he did, he, he used to shoot down MiGs for a living in the <laughs> Probably not a good guy to corner. And then, and then Bart Sabrell had the, had the temerity to actually sue him for assault. <laughs> and the judge threw it out. I mean, yeah, when you yeah. look at the video that, that Bart Sabrell actually wound up trying to sell to the news stations, um, you can see that, that Bart was in this guy's face. Buzz clocked him and moved on. It was clearly a defensive measure. And this was all done for show, you could tell. Because, you know, uh, after Buzz hit him, Bart Sabrell didn't say, you're doing that because of years of pent-up guilt and all that stuff. He actually, he turned to the camera and said, did you get that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a little, little bit of a tell there. Just a little bit. Wow. So, so yes, I'm aware of Buzz Aldrin hitting that guy. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I had another question here for you. If you could send a manned mission to anywhere in the universe, ignoring the feasibility of getting there in a reasonable amount of time, where would you most like to go? Mm. Hmm. Um, the snide answer would get me in trouble. Um, go on. <laughs> do, <laughs> do go on. <laughs> do a manned mission anywhere in the universe? It's Disneyland, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Real place in my mind. Um, golly, you know, I didn't actually see that question. Uh, it's it, it's hard to say. A minute ago. You know, Mars is such an easy answer, but I, it depends. It depends on the circumstances. You can't ask a scientist a question like that because they say, "Well, it depends." Now, are we talking about <laughs> travel? Do we have suspended animation? Are we using current technology? Um, if I could tell NASA, you know, and I had unlimited money, what what should be our next goal? I would say the moon, Mars, and asteroids. If you were saying, hey, just for, for grins, um, I'd probably say Saturn. Because I think going to Saturn would be uh, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were anywhere in the universe, most, most objects in the universe wouldn't be that interesting up close to see, unfortunately. I shouldn't say, I don't want to phrase that way, but you know, <laughs> see these, these gorgeous pictures of like the Orion Nebula or the Pillars of Creation and those things. The thing is, if you get up close to them, they won't look like that. That's you're looking at it through a telescope. There are filters being used, and when you get close to them and they're spread out over the sky, their light is very faint, and so they actually look much fainter if you were hanging over them uh, than 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 you would when you see them through a telescope. So really, the things that are cooler, like stars, planets, um, that that kind of thing, and and you know we have a star, we have planets here, uh, and and it would be interesting to see some of these other objects up close. But uh, of, of the common objects, I, I, I do think Saturn. I think that would really be pretty intense. You look at those Cassini pictures coming back from that planet, they're gorgeous, one after another. To be able to actually you know, hang in orbit there and, and see that with your own eyes would be pretty damn cool. Yeah. Okay, once um, again, I have talked you into stunned silence. <laughs> well, I was just We're thinking enthralled. about how cool that would be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I want to go. I'm imagining it. <laughs> <laughs> Send me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, send Liz. Well, send Liz on an errand. That's Yay. what we usually do. <laughs> In space. Liz, Liz, we need some ice. Go to Saturn's rings and buy some, will you? <laughs> um, what's your favorite weird or wondrous little oddity? It, the question is in the universe, but feel free to limit that as well, because there's a lot of oddities and weirdness in the universe. So. Are you asking him what his space what? oddity is? Yes, what is your favorite space oddity? <laughs> I've been told to major <laughs> uh, I'm getting pretty good at that on Rock Band, actually. Nice. Um, boy, the favorite odd thing. I don't know. Dark. I, there's the right answer, and then there's, like, the actual answer. <laughs> The actual answer is probably um, these rings that are around a star that blew up in 1987. Oh, 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 wait. I'm going to do a terrible thing. I'm going to go off camera. Yay! Chair! The chair is spinning slow. Screw all of you, by the way. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, he's off camera. We're so happy. You can see my bookshelf better, right? Can you see that? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. So that's a Hubble picture. In the middle, uh, I can't see what I'm doing there, is, is a star that blew up in 1987. And what happened was, um, when they pointed Hubble at it, we got this weird thing where it got these three rings. And it's like a, 
it's like an hourglass like this. And you've got a ring up here and a ring down here and then a, a, a thicker ring in the middle. And um, there's not a really good explanation for this. We don't, we, we've seen objects like this, but it's, it's, it, when we saw it, it was unique. And I studied it for years. I got my PhD studying basically, not this image, but ones taken earlier than that. And it's bizarre. And there are a couple of explanations now, but nobody's really quite sure. And now we've found a couple of other objects like it. So see, that's the actual answer. And it's, it, there's probably a better answer for an interview on camera to get people to donate money. Um, and anybody watching this should be donating money. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great uh, answer. You know what? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's open up Twitter. Um, uh, uh, Kelly Astris says, I'm on, I'm on Desert Bus right now. Desert Bus says, I'm on Desert Bus right now. And <laughs> Perkins says I'm on desert. Everybody's just saying I'm on desert bus right now. Wait, hold on. Uh, and hopping fun. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think someone else is about to say you're on desert bus. Yeah. Is any of them you? Is <laughs> so watching it? It's just all people that's sitting there, you know, tweeting while they're while, while I'm talking. Um, um, on the topic of Twitter, the 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 chat has asked you uh, maybe when we're done the call to post that picture to Twitter because everybody would like to see a, a picture of it that's a little more visible. Can we, uh, what's his Twitter address? Uh, bad, bad astronomer. astronomer. Bad astronomer. Just, word? just go yes. and look up Hubble supernova, and you'll find it. All right. Pretty much that easy. Matter of fact, if you were to type it, you could probably put it up on Skullcam now or whatever it is Ooh. you're doing to directly do the. Internet In fact, wizard. there it is. I found it. It was the first image. Yeah. It's tiny. It's tiny, but I'll find a bigger one and. and okay. And there, there are better there. ones. Yeah. Um, or I can just do this. Put it up on Still Store Cam, but. <laughs> Yay. I'm sorry, what? I'm that much of a dork. Yay! Um, my daughter is now addicted to MST3K2, which is pretty awesome. Sweet. Highly recommend. Yeah. And I saw, I, I, got, I caught like the last minute of Kevin Murphy a couple of days ago. So awesome. Oh, we were talking to Tom Servo. <gasps> ah. So you know what? Uh, I'll just go with that as my answer. Okay. Do you remember when you asked me that question like 20 minutes ago? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a good answer. That's a much better picture. That is a much better picture. Oh, oh slightly, slightly different angle, but that, that is a... Put it on that, that might not awesome be picture. a real picture. It, it must... can't really be a different angle. No? Yeah. Oh, good yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> He's smart. He, he knows these things. I, I <laughs> see spectacular. what you're getting at there. Let's yeah. see if I can find the appropriate one. I wonder now, you know, I should probably open up Desert Bus on my browser so I can see what you're doing. Because all I'm getting is the Skype window. Ah. So let's see if I do that. It'll probably... Really... We're showing your face. Sort of um... problem. Hey, look at my big yellow head. <laughs> Yay. Yay! Don't forget to mute. Oh, it's muted. Here we go. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, we just <laughs> rearranged my office here. Nice. So... That looks terrible. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just rearranged my office so I can't. Um, Alex, it's bad. Wow, well. I turned Not purple. The... What, what is going on now? I was oh trying God. to fix how yellow you are, but no, it seems to have ended in disaster. Of course, let's just know, leave that alone. He's got like a whole Simpsons Alex, character thing going it's on. It's good. Bad astronomer. That's right. I need Not pointy ears. Oh, there I go. My bad. And I'm yellow again. All right. You're... I, I have a question. Sure. Okay. Shoot. Are you take, what? Uh, and I think there's also in chat. Like, what inspired you to be bad astronomer? Like. So I suck at this. Um, <laughs> Yay! Um, really, it, 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 there's a long story, <laughs> shocking, and a shorter one. The shorter one is simply that I saw a lot of people saying stuff about astronomy that was wrong. There are a lot of misconceptions about astronomy and uh, or astronomical topics. And so I decided to start correcting them. Now, um, you young whippersnappers probably uh, weren't around in 1993 in September, actually it was March of 93, I when I wrote my first web page. Yeah, they were mostly there. <laughs> Some of you, anybody there younger than like 18 and a half wouldn't know no. this, but uh, uh, any, any of you actually use Mosaic? <laughs> no. 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 I use no. Mosaic. <laughs> Never use one of those computers, you have to crank up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was 93, and uh, I, had, I had a hyperlink in it, and an inline image. It was pretty advanced for that time. And uh, <laughs> okay. uh, I, I, the first thing I wrote about was standing eggs on it on the first day of spring, which is this old legend that you can only do it then. And it's, it's most people haven't even heard of this legend anymore. It's gone. Um, but there's a million things to take its place. And I've written about so much of this stuff, I can't even keep track of it anymore. <laughs> um, 
why the moon looks big on the horizon, or looking at the sun will make you blind, and all this kind of stuff. And it turns out, usually, there's a complicated answer behind some of this stuff. And sometimes it's easy. It's like, yeah, we landed on the moon. No, UFOs aren't alien spaceships and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of the time, there's more subtle and, and interesting explanations behind it. And I just started writing it up. And next thing I know, uh, I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> Yay! And we're glad you are. Cut, cutting out the middle there, but there you go. That's another step happening. The course, question marks and profits somewhere. I heard a yes. rumor you had something to do with um, an episode of Big Bang Theory. Is that true? Nope. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. To us, Liz. Lie to us! <laughs> Um, no, uh, yes, actually, I guess it is public. I can't talk about that. I, um, uh, where do I even start with this? Um, <laughs> I, was, well, I, was in, I was in California, and I got a chance to see a live taping of Big Bang Theory, and um, uh, one of the uh, co-producers, uh, Bill Prady, is, he's, <laughs> of everybody on that show, um, his other producer is Chuck Lorre, all the stars, none of them is a geek. They're all, they're all normal people. Um, but Bill is the one who actually uh, uh, has a lightsaber and you know really knows all the all the geeky stuff. And so I I bumped into him a couple of times before. So when I showed up, they uh, they let me actually stand on the stage and everything. It was awesome. But they introduced me to their science advisor. They have a physicist who is the science advisor for the show. And so we chatted for a while, and um, a few weeks later, he emails me and says, listen, we've got this, um, this scene where Sheldon is uh, walking down the steps in the apartment. And it helps if I do the walking down the steps in the apartment climbing. <laughs> um, right, not quite right. Eddie. Um, no, nothing from you guys? Do you watch the show? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> we're, just, we're, just a, we're just a uh, tough crowd. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> So there's a scene where Sheldon's walking down the steps in the apartment, and he's he's reciting the names of all the nearest stars in order, and he, because he's got a little bit of an OCD thing, and they wanted to make sure they knew how to pronounce some of the star names, so they sent me the list, and I, I wrote out how to pronounce them all, and um, that that made me very happy to actually see Sheldon doing that. Um, what I should have done was, <laughs> damn, I think of this now. <laughs> I should have told them on purpose to mispronounce something without telling them. Oh yes, this one's pronounced this way. And then to see if they actually listen and have Sheldon do that, then I could go, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then wait for all the nerd rage on the internet. <laughs> Sheldon mispronounced the name of Gleza three two nine. You know something like that. Would be awesome. Um. <laughs> so there you go. We've had a couple more questions come in. So fascinating sport. Yeah. Let's see if I can maybe ask one more, and then I think we probably ought to look at maybe moving on to the uh, auction, the little auction, auction that we've got. Yeah, lined anything up. else? Yeah. Okay. Um. The, the last question I'll ask is, uh, uh, for lack of a better question, or sorry, for a better question, <laughs> in the opinion of the poster at any rate, uh, do you think commercial space travel, travel will be feasible within the next hundred years? Within the next hundred years? Yeah, they're yes. giving a century. Good heavens, yes. You know, a hundred years ago, we, we'd only been into, into flying airplanes for a few years, and there was no such thing as commercial flight. And, and, and now you can have commercial flight anytime you want to spend a lot of money and have your, your junk fumbled. So <laughs> you know, one can only hope how far we'll be a century from now. Um, they'll have robots fondling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, that was, that was a great way to, to end that part of the I question. chatted myself into a corner. Um, <laughs> Actually, no, in, in fact, similar. it depends what you mean by commercial flight, because you know NASA contracts to to, to Boeing and, and these other companies to build rockets. Uh, but in fact, you know, completely private companies like um, like SpaceX or Jeff Bezos, who, who does Blue Origin, this guy who was um, uh, started Amazon.com, right? And and now he's got his own space company, Blue Origin, and Richard Branson and Virgin Galactic. All of these guys, they are on the verge of success. SpaceX has launched four rockets into orbit. Uh, they have NASA contracts, and I think I think you know they're gonna they're leading the way. Virgin Galactic uh, doesn't do orbital stuff. They don't go around the Earth. Their rockets go up and come back down. But SpaceX, they actually go around the Earth. They can launch satellites and people and you know, space probes into orbit or beyond. And SpaceX is already talking about building a heavy launch vehicle in the next few years, something really big, like a Saturn V class rocket. 
So, you know, in the next 100 years, uh, I'd say in the next 10, the only problem is uh, Congress. <laughs> um, the, the NASA budget just came out. I just wrote about this today. And they, they cut in half, basically, the president's request for money to go to commercial space uh. systems. And it's, it's galling, galling. But, uh, you know, I won't, I won't go into too much politics here, except that I hate politicians. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's can be um, you know, oddly, my solution to this is, is very simply double NASA's budget. <laughs> it's like, what, are you kidding? It's like, yeah, NASA, NASA gets 0.7% of the national budget. So it's a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. You know, it's, it's less than a penny on the dollar of your taxes. And look what they do. You know, Hubble, Cassini, probes orbiting Mercury and Mars. It's, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. And we choose to put money towards weird things. You know, to put this in perspective, we spend, as private citizens, we spend five times as much on tobacco as we do on NASA. Uh, now, you know, that's, that's a, a personal choice, but, you know, there are things that the government spends money on that maybe, you know, maybe is a little bit of a waste. But we need more tanks. So. <laughs> NASA cigarettes. That, oh, <laughs> yes. Done. Yeah. Oh, I have a, I have a NASA sold. shot glass upstairs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Moon spikes. I, uh, the, the, the gift shops at the NASA Center, I used to work at a NASA Center as a contractor for a few years, and um, the NASA Center sell, they, they have little gift shops, they're off campus, but they have NASA approved products and stuff with the logo on it. And you get a hat or shirt or whatever, and they had a shot glass, and I thought, what? What <laughs> civil servant said, yeah, sure, we want the NASA symbol on something that'll get people hammered. <laughs> So, I bought a shot glass that like a Let's go to space. I think it'd be yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't afford the hookah that they had. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Really somebody in the chat says. No. Oh. Oh. Somebody, in the chat, oh, something? Uh, somebody in the chat has said NASA will spray. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Uh, Fire. Someone in the chat also says they have a NASA beer mug. Oh, okay. Nice. Sweet. Well, that's reasonable. That's not about getting wasted. NASA's learning from the Russians. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Space boobs. 